Summer, the busy season at Glacier National Park. But a few people think the park is even more enjoyable in the winter. That's when you can leave behind the cars and buses and get away from snowmobiles. It's when every bend in the path leads to a new adventure, like reading wild stories that are written in the snow. In Glacier, you'll be miles from the crowds, but you'll also be miles from help. So preparation is vital. In the next few minutes, you'll get a quick lesson on winter survival in Glacier. You won't be quizzed, but you'll need to pay attention because once you're on the trail, you'll be tested, especially by the park's unpredictable weather. Glacier can have sudden snowstorms and temperatures that can drop from 50 degrees to well below zero in just hours. The park can also have strong winds, which make cold temperatures much more dangerous. In fact, the number one killer in outdoor sports is hypothermia, which occurs when the body's core temperature drops. With hypothermia, victims can't recognize their own symptoms, so you need to know the warning signs in others, like memory lapses, lack of coordination, drowsiness, confusion, and speech that's slurred or incoherent. Loss of body heat can be reversed, but only by offering the victim external sources of warmth. For instance, warm, non-alcoholic drinks. Get the victim out of the weather, preferably into a tent if you're at camp. Make sure he or she remains awake and has on several layers of dry clothes. Of course, it's better to prevent hypothermia in the first place. To do that, you need to drink plenty of fluids. And remember that if perspiration stays on your skin, you'll lose heat much faster to the wind. So wear clothes that are made from wool, fleece, or polypropylene. In other words, materials that wick moisture away from the body. Dress in layers so you can add and remove, depending on your level of exertion. And don't forget a hat and extra clothes. You also need to know the symptoms of frostbite, which occurs when body tissue freezes. Look for patches of white on exposed skin, including ears, fingers, toes, and faces. Also, be aware that frostbite starts at the surface, but can move to deeper tissue. You can prevent frostbite by keeping your skin protected and by stopping and rewarming your exposed skin. Once frostbite occurs, leave the backcountry as soon as possible and get to a medical facility for controlled rewarming. The best policy is to be prepared for any weather condition. Before you start your trip, check the forecast and have an emergency site selected in case you can't get to your original destination. Trail conditions can quickly become more difficult due to a variety of factors, including rain, breakable crust, new snow, drifting snow, and even lack of snow. You'll probably be traveling over deep snowpack, so you'll need cross-country skis or snowshoes to move efficiently. Bring a first aid kit, because even a minor injury can threaten your life in the backcountry. A repair kit for your skis or snowshoes and extra fuel to melt snow. If you're headed for higher, steeper terrain, each member of your party should carry a probe pole, a shovel, and an avalanche transceiver and should know how to use them. Before you start out, you'll need to leave a detailed itinerary with someone you trust. If you haven't already done this, you should consider calling a friend before you reach the trailhead because your permit will not initiate a search if you are overdue. Good luck, guys. We strongly recommend that you travel with at least one other person. However, the size of your party is limited to no more than 12 people. Once you're on the trail, keep a few travel tips in mind. Avoid skiing on frozen lakes, which can be treacherous. Be extremely careful crossing snow bridges and creeks. And if you're traveling to an isolated area, plan on breaking trail. Also, pay attention to local landmarks and remember that most ski trails are not marked although some trails are indicated with orange blazes on tree trunks. If possible, maintain separate tracks for skiing, snowshoeing, and hiking. If the trail is muddy, walk in the middle to avoid damaging trailside vegetation. If you become lost, stay put and make yourself visible with smoke from a fire or by creating long straight lines in the snow. Make sure you have the latest weather report and the latest avalanche information. The mountains and glacier are steep, so avalanches are a real danger. And you need to be able to recognize the danger signs. Look for naturally occurring avalanches and radiating cracks in the snow. Listen for the snowpack settling, which makes a kind of whomping sound. Stay alert to free water in the snowpack and also to small slides started by people in your party. As you travel, stay off cornices. 
If you come to a steep, open slope, make sure you traverse it well below the bottom or well above the steep section. Even if a slope looks safe, survey the terrain and make a note of areas that could offer safety, such as ridges or groups of trees. Before you cross, loosen your pack straps, remove your ski pole straps, and make sure you've zipped up and fastened all of your clothing. When you set out, cross one at a time in single file. If you do get caught in an avalanche, shout to alert your party, throw off your pack, and make swimming motions to stay on the surface. If an avalanche catches another member of your party, note the last place the victim was seen and mark the spot visually. After the snow stabilizes, assign a spotter to watch for more avalanches. Make a note of any safety zones and make sure you have an escape route. Go to the spot you noted and mark it with a visible object, then search directly downslope. With your beacon on, probe the snow or look for clues in the surface. Remember that after 30 minutes, the survival rate for buried victims drops to 50%. So if you're the sole survivor, don't leave the scene unless help is only a few minutes away. Needless to say, when it's time to set up camp, stay far away from avalanche-prone slopes. And to protect yourself from the wind, stay away from ridge tops and open areas.